Hello, me. Oh, that's really loud. Shaka Mahala, my dudes. Right, cruise is back. Very exciting. It's also been a bit of a headache for me. So <laughs> I'm gonna run that, run you guys through what's been going on in this episode. Uh, it's back from getting the auto swap. You've just seen that. The auto swap is sick. Uh, I've only got two or three days of driving in it and then I'll straight into pulling the diffs apart because don't know if you guys remember from this episode at Wadigan's where I was sort of lacking climbing capabilities. Previous owner blew up the rear diff locker. So we ordered in some Harrops and the thing I neglected to tell Harrop was that it is actually a twin lock GXL model. So the Harrop lockers are designed for the Land Cruisers that don't have factory lockers. There is a big difference in between the two. Harrop don't actually sell one for this model. They are working on it. I was pulling the diffs apart anyway, cause I'm installing the reduction gears in the diff. So we're going from a three nine diff ratio to a four eight eight. I use the nitro diff gears. Uh, everyone seems to, to inform me that they're, they're the go-to. They're one of the strongest around. 488, it does weaken your pinion a bit. The higher the ratio, the weaker the pinion gets at the front. That being said, didn't really want to mess with it too much. So, so I've given it to the local diff shop down the road. Learning about solid axle diffs today. So I've never had a solid axle front end car until the Cruiser. So we're gonna be learning about hubs, stub axles, swivel hubs, all that palaba, how to pull that front axles out and rear axles out. I'm learning as we're going, so hopefully I don't leave anyone astray. Research, YouTube, all that is your best friend. Anyone can do it, you guys can do it. It's all just a matter of having a go, it's all nuts and bolts and bearings and some basic tools, really. Like, I know that I've got the big ass King Chrome toolkit, but majority of that was what I already had anyway. Just now it is mega organized and mega easy to find things and mega good quality. Like it doesn't, my tools don't break anymore. I'm not constantly having to go and buy stuff. So don't let the hoist and, and tools lead you astray at all. Plus if you're on the side of a track, you only need to know how to pull an axle out. So let's, let's go and get into it, eh? It's a little bit rusty, as you can see, and a little bit sooty. I need to angle that exhaust pipe a different way. We're basically gonna undo these six axle bolts, pull it out six inches, do the other side as well. Disconnect the tail shaft and we should be able to pull that whole center out. Time lapse. <whistles> Let's just have like 100 cameras on. Well, I've already done the other side. So you basically got this little cone locator piece, a washer. So six of those. M10 sort of bolt, thread that into there. <laughs> See it separate. Separate there, and a bit of oil come out, that's all. Don't lose any of this. It's always good to have a little container or something. Sound like I'm on a cooking show or something now, eh? I've got my like, apron on, but it's actually just a camera. What are you? That is your drive axle under that is a, is a nut, bolts that to your shaft. Uh, from chatting to, so, Correct me if I'm wrong, if you're out there and you've broken one of these, I'd be interested to find out because uh, the boys haven't had any bad feedback yet. That generally is a good thing. Make sure you drop the oil out of it because uh, last thing you want is to start undoing these center bolts and have all the oil fall out on you. Like a little bit's gonna happen, but not all of it. So my new fancy uh, gimbal battery's just died, so. Each week. Batteries. Get another one, you moron. We're moving on to the front now. I haven't really played with them much. I've removed hubs before because I swapped the sides once because uh, I was making a racket. And I sound like I know what I'm doing, but I sort of don't. But <laughs> we're about to figure it out. I'll put time apps on, you can watch me struggle. <laughs> I've got the swivel hub off. 
Let me know if I did it right or wrong. Um, it seems like a lot of work just to get a CV out. IFS is definitely a lot cleaner, <laughs> that's for sure. And we'll pull the CV out a bit so that we can pull the center out. And then I think I have to do a whole lot more there. I'm guessing you just pump it full of grease when you put it all back together. I'm just gonna get all involved here. Woo. That is a front axle. Okay guys, what do we got here? We've rear nitro and front nitro 488 gears. A solid sleeve replacement preload spacer kit. Um, I've been told that's pretty important. The manual conversion from all 4x4. The brand is ASIN and Terrain Tamer. Yeah, manual hub conversion. Excuse me. Excuse me. Are you stealing my 10 mil? Is that what you're doing? Hopefully you can hear me over the uh, raging storm that's going on out there. This thing, I reckon I'll fit my head in it. Hold on. Hello, Nick! Oh! That's really loud. Now that we've concluded that little test, we can go ahead and put the silicon sealant on. So I've wire wheeled all this, and then I've, I've wiped it all down, given it a bit of a wax and grease remove. Still a bit of crap on there. Whoa! That scared the crap out of me. I'm a jumpy dude. Okay, let's go. Three, two, one. Oh, shit. Yeah, get on that. Come on, you bitch. Moment of truth, I was just putting this Santa on. It was all going in. Oh, so diff centers is obviously a very advanced modification, which is why I, I decided to just leave it with the professionals to, to make up for me. Uh, especially changing diff gears and things like that. There's also a process for running in the new gears. Drive for, you know, 30 or 40 Ks, let it cool. Nah, probably less. I think it was like <laughs> Do it again, let it cool down, do it again for about 300 Ks. It's called heat cycling. Let's it expand and contract and heat and cool and, until it sort of gets to its average and then that's it, done. Overheat them straight off the bat. I can't tell you what it's gonna do. Uh, but I'm guessing it's not good, otherwise I wouldn't have this process. So, <laughs> Macca's words of wisdom that he doesn't 100% know what he's talking about, so don't take it as the gospel. Unfortunately, we're sticking with the factory locker, and as we all know, there is a slight design fault in the front diffs, and that is the, the adjusting nut on the Toyotas can come loose. Then your diff sort of walks, and I think that's what happened originally in the original front. We're gonna try and tackle that by TIG welding some locking welds on that nut so it can't ever come loose. And we're just gonna stick with the front locker for now until Harrop until Harrop design their new ones. So and then we'll just then we'll switch her over. Alrighty dude. So the uh, I'm just gonna throw a bit of oil on this bad boy before we put it in. The diff guys recommended. Let me know if you're against it or not, because I've got, I've got no prejudice against different types of oils, but the diff guys reckon you can just about put this in anything except for a Toyota RAV4 or something he said. Gear oil 140, let me know in the comments if it's wrong, but hey, I'm just going off what the experts say. Oh, make sure you fill it up before you drive it though, that is like crucial. Oh yeah, this thing's bloody heavy, mate. Oh, well, that's handy having those. <laughs> oh, straight up, I didn't have to go with that. Oh, didn't even spit on it, that was great. Oh my dudes and ladies. Earlier I talked about removing the full bloody swivel hub to get the axle out and I was like, oh, I don't know if that's right. Well, it's not right, you don't have to. On this side, I've proven that. Uh, I did have to drop the bottom collar off, must be to take a bit of pressure off that bearing to, uh, to get it out. No, you do not have to remove the swivel hub to get the axle out. It does fit. King Crow Molly grease. The one grease for me. <laughs> this is gonna get messy, but. Ooh. Don't put that on the lens. <laughs> TJ be peeking. Oh, it fills up pretty quick, you know. Like, not too bad, to be fair. Couple big scoops, I reckon. I think the problem with overfilling is it sort of pressurizes and starts popping out the seals and you probably don't want that. But besides that, I apologize for my rookiness pulling apart this front diff and stuff. Uh, I'm sure I'll be a lot more fluent on the next one and I'll be able to possibly teach you something. But I don't know, like I said earlier, we're learning together.
And it's just about having a go, isn't it? Like, now I know my diff. Now I know how the front diff works. Now I know how to pull every bit apart. So when I'm out on the tracks and I break it, because it's no doubt going to happen, I know how to pull it apart. And we're gravy. Other side's back in. Um, we've packed them full of grease. Seems to be about three quarters full sort of thing. But yeah, going to go ahead now and put on the stub axle, which has a gasket. It's going to go gasket, stub axle, and then we'll move putting our hubs on. And we're on the home stretch. Yeah! I swear, you put something down and it disappears. Poof. Always talk your ball. Bolts up to manufacturer's specifications. This, my friend, is supposed to go on here with those bolts. I, my friend, did not install that with those bolts. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm pretty pretty on cloud nine after last night. We gave away the Hilux. Uh, lucky winner, Andrew, and the $1,000 Outback Equipment Voucher and the Shed Life No Waste Weekend Vouchers. So, oh man, it was sick. Like, it's such a cool feeling. I just, not something I thought I'd ever be doing ever in my life. Back into the cruiser. Well, I'm back in the cruiser. I'm gonna go back on the wheels today. Just wanted to show you guys this uh, this manual hub conversion that I'm doing. I bought it from all 4x4. It's set to free. This this is actually on the axle itself. And the spin the diff just sits there. Your wheels just go, woo! Spinner into lock mode. And now you can feel that resistance because it's actually spinning the diff gears now. Now I know what you're thinking. You're like, what? Why would you do that when you have auto auto locking ones that do it all for you. You don't have to get out of the car and turn this little dial. For the wheeling I wanna be doing this year, auto hubs tend to break a lot and mine were already making a lot of chatter and noise. From what everybody's been telling me and all the research I've done is going back to a manual hub conversion, the way to go. They're a lot stronger, they're way more basic. There's not all little things like this inside chattering around and breaking and it seems to be the way to go so um that's why i did that and uh fingers crossed hubs are never an issue i'm trying to make this as uh brake free as possible but if i was going to do that properly i'd probably take some horsepower out of it <laughs> it's a funny nap but that's not fun at all <laughs> so a few little repairs before tassie there was a couple of uh alloy brackets that broke in the engine bay so Lucky, I got my good pal Morgs. Where's the thing? We got Morgs here, so Morgs is going to um, Morgs is going to sort it out. So you need. Oh, hold on. How are we, guys? Hello. People. Hello. <laughs> he's uh, he's teaching me some aluminium welding, uh, which I do not know how to do yet. As you guys know, I love to have a crack at absolutely everything. And as you guys know, I love welding and I love learning new types of welding. So aluminium is today's job. Morgs welds this day in, day out, making gates and fences and teach me a few things and hopefully you guys can learn a bit too. When I did my apprenticeship, I wasn't allowed to sit down. My boss absolutely hated it. As I've learned throughout the years, a comfortable welder is a good welder. What I usually do, if I'm making many parts, I'll get myself comfortable to uh, at a certain height that I'm welding that part and I'll sit down and I'll get make and I'll put things accordingly to make that my job as easy as possible. So a lot of the times Very if smarter, not harder, eh? Exactly. <laughs> so if I was doing a lot of straight welds across here, if this was clamped against there, I can set my weld up. Obviously here we've, we're lucky enough to have a flexible torch and I can sit there and just run my hand along the box and then it stays nice and steady and you get a nice bead. No wrong way how to feed a wire. It's essentially going through a pull through method like that to keep my fingers away from the weld. Clean surface with TIG welding, aluminium. So thinners, terps, no brake clean. Cause if you heat that up, it's a carcinogenic and was used in the world, uh, second world war. So don't use that. Don't use that. <laughs> <laughs> but if you heat it up, then that creates the gas that, yeah, it's a mustard gas. You can weld without gloves, but 
uh, many years, your hands start to look like you're about 70 years old. I have remote on, so I have the ability to go up and down amperage as I like. Uh, a lot of welders like that. I, I did my apprenticeship like that, so I like to, I like to have control over how, how big I want my pool and how deep I want my welds to go. Um, a lot of people will just set it up on, a, on the setting and weld all day every day and either have to go faster or slower to eat the material up. Uh, other than that, that's about it really. And then- Practice makes perfect. Yeah, many, many hours. Oh, yep. I can, uh, oh my God, I can see. Uh, so. I'll start over here so we don't ruin the shed lock. Nice man. You get into a rhythm. I see that the contamination when you stop. Push. Yeah. And that's an E. Nice work, man. <laughs> yeah, look. I've had a bit of a blowout on the D. <laughs> To be honest, I never really look. It's always more of a feeling. Feel, and that's why you've got the and dial. that's why I have the dial. Okay. And then I have a foot pedal, which was awesome. Well, there you go. Get an adjustable dial one, guys, because it's all about feel. And if, if the material's not starting to mirror up, you need more heat. Um, if it's mirroring up and pooling real bad and undercutting, you've got too much heat. Loaded. Your auto gear shifter is a great spot for the GoPro. Oh really? It's shaking everywhere. It's shaking, yeah. It's shaking nearly as much as your steering wheel. Yeah. <laughs> get up. Anyway, me, TJ, and good old Dan Buckner. Back in the episode, guys. Yeah. Back. We're back. We are heading up DI just for a little bit of a beach test. It's very last minute. It's 20 past three in the Arvo and we're just like, oi, Dan. Let's go up the beach. Let's go test this thing. He's like, yep, coming up. So he's come up from Brizzy. And First official test of the automatic gearbox off-road. We know it's beach, but you know, beach is super easy and That's how hard I, on the gearbox. It's hard so. on the gearbox. That's how I blew my manual, so. A little bit of a test, and we've got the right person with us in case something goes wrong. He's brought the gear, uh, what's he bring? The laptop. Oh, he's got his laptop in case we have to change something, but. We've got no hoist with us or spare gearbox, but. I love that I'm not changing gears right now. Yeah, I know. It's so good, this thing. Like, it's just so chill to drive now. Oh, yeah, by the way, the 488 gears. Woo! is fast now. Holy crap. Something is happening. Ch trying to change your diff gears. Trying. Yeah. The tow truck will be able to get out of here. Oh, we're yeah. gravy. Yeah. Lucky we haven't hit the beach yet. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally uploaded Brent Massey's tune to... Oh, oh we don't want that. <laughs> no. Brent's, Brent's is a drift car 2JZ S13. We don't want that gearbox tune. <laughs> no, we don't want that gearbox tune in here. Uh, you got bigger wheels than you, mate. Bigger wheels than you. Yeah, they win. <laughs> oh, yeah. That had like 50s on it. Oh, mate, you're joking. Just locking me hubs, mate. <laughs> I've gone backwards. <laughs> Loved it. We've actually had a storm surge, so the um, it's super, it's super chopped up up here. Oh, God. But we're just cutting it across. <laughs> Both lockers working, reduction gears in, automatic, all these things being tested, manual locking up. And my full drive light actually works again. I found out I never plugged it back in, the, the little light sensor, when I put the manual gearbox change. Exciting. Oh, it's already gone to hard sand. Yeah, yeah that was uh, five seconds of fun. That was nothing short-lived. But it was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> and that... Man, the eight speed just ate it. There's no like, oh, grab second. Oh no, we've lost boost. Oh, back to first. It's just, 
So it's ba 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 ba. So you would have seen just before we got Dan from Eight Speed, he's just come up. Sort of Sammy wanted to have a camp and check on the eight speed, you know, make sure it's all gravy. I actually think it's his first time camping. He's a he's a drifter. <laughs> he's, a, he's a drifter, he's not into this, but he seems to be enjoying it. So I'm gonna take Dan up tonight. Yeah, so far with our very inextensive testing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's a good little warm-up to Tazzy, yeah. right? Yeah. Alright, yeah. We've got one more test guys. Oh yeah, my guy the flexi tracks give so, it. So we're gonna do another I'll put it on a different episode. We're gonna have a little little good little hour on the on, on the play hills. They're nothing super serious, but you do like twin locks is you know, we'll test the lockers, the hubs. We're gonna re-lock her again! You know what I mean? We both wouldn't get used to it. Because you need to get used to it. Yeah, yeah. These things are very top heavy and strange to the wheel, but like Wadigans was fun, Wadigans was fine, but I don't know, it's just really strange. Sometimes you get these weird, like, oh, shit, she gonna roll? It won't, but it just feels like it will. Oh, breathe it in, Mac. I'll tell you what, girls, better bloody appreciate how hard we're working Sunday night. Oh. <laughs> Seriously, I like it. Bloody hell. I've actually been very busy, guys, because we're about to do a big trip, and Max. Crazy timelines have put me under extreme excessive and I keep stress. Pumping in full of content. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta try and get some stuff banked because we're going to Tassie for 10 days. Then we got a Brisbane oh Brisbane show. We're going to Brizzy show. Yeah, we got a big stand of Brizzy show this year, guys. We're proper set up, you know, been in organizing all the <coughs> finer details actually recently. So that's coming up too. Brizzy 4x4 show, 17th of March. Trying to, like, as per usual, trying to find a campsite. We want to come out, and the crews have made it up. <laughs> I have this little ridge, but the rain just fell in, so it's gonna pull him out. Oh, it looks like it was a way out, but it hasn't been for a while, so I don't know. The cruiser came out pretty easy though. Ah, oh, it's better. <laughs> That one. <laughs> so we basically can't get anywhere because the tide's so high and getting higher. Sorry, Dan. Sorry, mate. Right, we've uh, <laughs> full stitch up. So I'm feeling some soft sand takeoffs for you guys. The automatic. I'm just gonna have a crack at like a light throttle takeoff on soft sand, and then I'll do a medium, and then I'll do like a pretty heavy throttle takeoff. Medium. <laughs> well, that goes to prove, guys, to take off the beach, you should just like rolling start. <laughs> so now he's going to send it. So that sort of goes to show with the auto, it's got that stall at the start. So if you take off nice, it really eases the power into the wheels and gl glides you over the sand. No accelerator. <laughs> We're back from the beach. Car's not clean yet, but it's alive in one piece. I must, I just want to say, we don't actually recommend going up the beach at high tide. We were just trying to test whether this sort of gearbox overheats or whatever. Yeah, we basically just wanted to to just put it through its paces and that some of the hardest conditions is soft sand for a long period of time. And we like, only hit 92, I think, was the worst. Uh, 92 hit. was the hottest it got and we were pushing soft sand for like 40 minutes straight. And you can see we're back on the bitumen now, so you're back down to 53, which is pretty impressive. It is very impressive. Like I know, I know Sam's Allison. When we were up at Fraser that time, we had to keep stopping because he was getting 110 plus degrees trans temps. And yeah, um, first little test. We're going to do another proper little crawly test, low range crawly test. Might do it in another episode, and then by then we should have like we should have a bit of a better idea what you think it's so yeah, far. Yeah, I think I think about in that one we can in that episode we'll do a bit of like a full review of how it went on the beach, how it went. <laughs> Off-road. 
Yeah, because at the moment, all I can say is it's friggin' sick and it's doing so, everything I thought plus <laughs> more. So yeah, I mean, it's still, it is being tested still, so we don't want to say it's perfect and, until we know, so. We'll do another episode soon. We might get it on some rocks, do some crawly stuff, and um, yeah, Mac will let you know what he thinks so far of, of the whole setup. Sounds good to me. See you soon. See you on the next one.